Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is question number seven from the January 2022 International A Level Edexcel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. Um, this question here is about a graph of a function which is defined as x plus 4 times x minus 2 times 2x plus 9. As you can see, it's a cubic curve. This will, if you expand it, you're going to get x cubed as your highest power. It has the shape of a cubic curve. It says, given that the curve with equation y equals fx minus p passes through the point with coordinates 0, 50, find the value of the constant p. Okay, so basically what they're saying here is when x equals 0, then you can say f of x minus p is equal to 50. That's what they're saying, basically. When x equals 0, when you substitute x equals 0 into this, then this minus p is going to be equal to 50. Okay, that's what it means. So that means f0 minus p is going to be equal to 50. That's what it means. And so therefore, we can basically just substitute 0 into this function. So we have 0 plus 4, which is 4, and 0 minus 2, which is negative 2. And we have 2 times 0, which is 0 minus 9, equal minus p is equal to 50. So this is 4 times minus 2 times minus 9. So that's 8 times negative, no, sorry, that's negative 8 times negative 9, which is positive 72. 72 minus p is equal to 50. Therefore, p is equal to p is equal to 72 minus 50. If you rearrange it like that, p is equal to 72 minus 50. So p is equal to 22. So there's the answer to part A of this question. Okay, so that's pretty simple. Um, uh, I mean, basically, what it's saying. Or another way you could think about it is if you multiply these two, these three together, that gives you the y-intercept. And the y-intercept of this is going to be 72, all right? If you can see the curve this right now, this is 72. Okay, that's the y-intercept because when x equals 0, you find the, y, the y-intercept. And basically, you want to find the value of p, which will cause this to go down to 50. So you have to go down, okay, by 20 space, 22 spaces for this to become 50. For the y-intercept to become 50, the whole thing has to move down by 22 spaces spaces so p must be 22 because f of x minus p is um, going to give you 0 50. that's another way of thinking about it in terms of transformations okay but this is like an algebraic way of answering it that's fine you can also think about it in terms of other well, y-intercept of this this is the y-intercept of this curve the y-intercept of this curve here is 72 it's for it to become 50 you've got to go down by 22 spaces so p must be 22. okay so that's um question part a pretty simple now for part B, it says, given that the curve with equation y equals fx plus q passes through the origin, write down the possible values of the constant q. Now for this one, the f by far the easiest way of thinking about this is in terms of transformations. So basically we have these, when I put f of x equals 0, okay, we find the x-intercepts, which are going to be when either x plus 4 is 0 or x minus 2 is 0, or 2x minus 9 is equal to 0. So we have our three intercepts, minus 4 and 2, and 9 over 2, which is 4.5. So this is negative 4, and this is 2, and this is 4.5. Now, what are the possible values of q Now, the, for, for this to pass through the origin? Now, f of x plus q, this, is a, this represents a transformation which is horizontal. Okay, if Q is positive, if, if Q is a positive value, then it's going to go to the left. If it's a, a negative value, it's going to go to the right. Okay, that's what happens when you have transformations inside the function. They kind of do the opposite. So let's look at for let's look at the, the coordinate zero. Um, sorry, it's minus four zero, sorry, first. Let's look at that minus four zero. Okay. For that to become 0, 0, it has to move four spaces to the right. So therefore, this is going to be fx minus 4. Therefore, q has to be equal to negative 4. 
right? Because it has to move four spaces to the right for this to end up there. So you have to have for it, for it to move to the right, okay? Inside the function, it's kind of like the opposite. If there's minus four, you move to the right. If it's plus four, you move to the left. So it has to be minus four. So Q has to be negative four for it to move to the right. And let's look at the point um, two, zero. For that to become zero, zero, let me just move this up here. One second. Q equals minus four, that's one value. For this to happen, you're gonna have to move two spaces to the left. For this, to, this, this has to end up over here, then it will go through the origin. That's another option. So that if it goes two spaces to the left, then you have to have, it has to be fx plus two. Okay, fx plus two inside the function because when it's a positive here, it goes to the left, that number of spaces. So therefore we can say that q could also be, in this case, it's going to be two. All right, and then we have the third case where this point becomes, goes to the origin. So that's when 4.5 and zero becomes zero, zero. So now this time it has to be to the left, negative 4.5 spaces. So that's fx plus 4.5. When it's inside the function, if it's a plot, if you add inside the function, you go to the left, that number of spaces. So therefore, q has to equal negative, sorry, positive 4.5. q has to be 4.5 for that to go to the left. And there's the answer to this, this question here. So those are the three possible values of q for this to pass through the origin. So either this passes the origin or that passes the origin or that passes the origin. Those are the three different ways where it will pass through the origin. One of these points here has to pass through the origin. And this is a, you know, this is a passing the origin with just a horizontal transformation. This is a horizontal trans translation. It's inside the function, this only causes horizontal movement of Q spaces. If Q is positive, it goes to the left. If Q is negative, it goes to the right. So that's how we dealt with that one. That's to do with transformations of functions in P1. And then part C says find F dash of X. Now here what we have to do is we have to differentiate this function. Now to differentiate this function, um, what we need to do is we need to expand the brackets and write them as separate terms. So first of all, let's write F of X in a more easy form for us to expand. We can expand the first two brackets. So I'll just write 2X minus 9 times. Now if I expand these two brackets here, I'll have x squared and I'll have plus 2x and minus 8. That's expanding those two. Now I can expand this. I've got 2x times x squared, which is 2x cubed, plus 4x squared, minus 16x. And I've got minus 9x squared, minus 18x, and plus 72. So we can say this is still f of x. We haven't differentiated it yet. Let's simplify this. 2x cubed, you got 4x squared minus 9x squared, which is negative 5x squared, um, minus 16x minus 18x, which is minus 34x, and you got plus 72. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to find f dash of x, which is what you find by differentiating this. So you're gonna have here three times two, you multiply by the power, so that's six x and take one from the power squared and you're going to have two times minus five which is minus 10 x to the power of one minus and the x term you drop the x and that is the differential of f of x that's the first derivative and that's part c done okay so now we're going to go on to part d and now for part e oh sorry part d it says we have to find um the range of values of x for which the gradient of the curve with the equation y equals f of x is less than negative 18. So the gradient of the curve is given by the first derivative. This is the gradient function. So we want to know when this function is less than negative 18. So we've got 6x squared minus 10x minus 34 is less than negative 18. We want to find when the gradient function is less than negative 18. So we've got to solve this quadratic inequality. Now to solve this quadratic inequality, I'm going to first um, rearrange it so it says uh, a zero here. All right, so I'll have 6x squared minus 10x minus 34 um, and then plus 18 is less than zero. The solution to this inequality and the solution to this inequality will be both the same. 
Okay, so you just rearranged it. So negative 34 plus 18, that gives you negative 16. So you have 6x squared minus 10x minus 16 is less than 0. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit before continuing by dividing everything by 2. So we have 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is less than 0. So now I'm going to find the critical values to find when this is equal to 0 first. So 3x squared minus 5x minus 8 is equal to 0. I want to solve this quadratic inequality or quadratic uh, equation. You can use factorizing. You can use a formula. I'm going to show you how to do it by factorizing. So I've got 3x squared here and negative 8 there. When I multiply those together, I get 24 or negative 24x squared. And I need two numbers that multiply or add together to give me negative 5x. So they have to multiply them to give me negative 24 and add to give me minus 5. It's 3x and 8x. And it's going to be, again, it's going to be negative 8x and plus 3x. That gives me negative 5 and that gives me negative 24. So it's the same same numbers. So there's going to be 3x here. And there's going to be an x. That's going to be plus 1. 3x times 1 is 3x, and x times minus 8 is minus 8x. That looks right to me now. You've got 3x minus 8 times x plus 1 equals 0. Now, um, let's just make sure that's 3x squared plus 3x minus 8x minus 8. Good. So we have either x equals 8 over 3 or x equals negative 1. Those are the two critical values. Now, if I make a little sketch of this, 8 over 3 is like over here somewhere. That's 8 over 3. A negative 1 is over here somewhere. So if I sketch this, 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 uh, the original function here, this one here, if I sketch this, it's going to look something like this. We can see that this is less than 0 between minus 1 and 8 over 3. Between minus 1 and 8 over 3, those is when, that's when this, when this function is less than 0, which means that's when this is less than negative 18, because this, then this, they follow on for each other. So the solution to this inequality and the solution to this inequality are the same, okay? Because we just added 18 to both sides, divided both sides by 2, and so the two solutions, the solutions to this and this will be the same. X is between minus 1 and 8 over 3, and that's the answer to part D. That's how you solve these quadratic inequalities. Now, there are different ways of factorizing. We could have split the middle term, Okay, we could have done it by just um, guess and check, just write, the, write out the two brackets. But what you don't do is you don't um, um, just write down these two answers. You don't just write these answers down. If you went straight from here to there, you were going to definitely lose marks, especially in P1. Okay, especially in P1. Um, generally p1 and p2 it's like that you will definitely lose marks so do not ever skip the step of uh, the step of factorizing all right don't ever skip that step it's very important for you to not just write these two down so you should try to factorize you could use a quadratic formula okay there's no problem you can either factorize or you could use a quadratic formula or you could complete the square but you have to show some method of you getting these answers so just writing these brackets down is enough all right, now, um, you know, there's different ways as I said of factorizing, but even if you did it by guess and check, if you have this written down, you're fine. But if you write something like, for example, x minus 8 over 3 times x plus 1, if you write that down, you're going to lose marks because they know that you've gone through your calculator to get to this step. Okay, you know that they know that you've gone to the calculator to get to this step. So that's something you have to be, be aware of. Okay. Um, that you don't just write this down because that's something that you know a lot of students do um, so be very careful of, of writing something like that down okay so try to factorize if you can't factorize use the formula um, if you can factorize you can complete the square you can use the formula but that's very important that you remember that okay so there are the answers for this question and that's the end of question number seven other questions from this particular paper P1 January 2022 International A-Level can be found in the playlist that should appear over here. Other questions which are related to uh, graphs of functions can be found in this playlist over here. There's also um, solving quadratic inequalities. 
which is, um, I guess, part of equations and inequalities. So I'll also put it in this playlist over here. So it'll be in two playlists. And you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.